back uh, before I speak in English for all those that are here I'd like to also say a few words in Punjabi before I speak I'd like to start my speech I have all of you I have a great thank you that you have come to California and अपना सहयोग देता आप मैं दर्शना चाहता कि 1989 दिन में जब पहला नगर कीर्तन थे शुरू की था सी उस वक्त इंडियन कांस्टेबल जो कि यही थे इनको कुछ दस मिल दे हैं उन्होंने पूरा जोर लाया सी कि सिखानो थे नगर कीर्तन का नहीं देना और वो नगर कीर्तन होया उस तो बाद वो बदले वो लोग तो उठे पर ऐसी ये थे दस फोर्ड दे में ज़्यादा अगे नोड हैं, सो ये स्टील दी आप सारी संगत को मुबारक बाद है। Today, today we gather here to celebrate the triumph of truth, justice, and equality over tyranny and terrorism. Time and time again, over this course of history. Enlightened souls have stood steadfast in the face of unjust powers. This, there it stands, has always been to give life to those that have sparked the freedom and love of humanity at the forefront of their consciousness. On June 1606, Guru Arjan Dev the fifth Guru of the Sikhs, on the path of truth and righteousness, preaching the message of love, challenged the oppressive empire of Yangi. Given the choice between life and death, he chose death. Death that would ignite the passion for freedom in any in, in his Sikhs that continued to show the strength for over and over almost four centuries later. As you know, iron must be forged in red hot flame. Guruji sat on peacefully on hot iron plate while a raging fire burnt underneath. As Yahangir ordered, hot sand poured to be over his head. Guru Hargobind, the sixth Guru, took his predecessor's resolve to sharpen the steel into the blades of Midi and Piri, worldly power and spiritual power. He raised the army and vowed that the Sikhs world over always will stand against injustices regardless of cost. And the tenth master took this resolve and formed the, the Khalsa. The Sikhs world over have proven their commitment to these centuries old orders borne out by their Gurus. Those in attendance here today lay their claim to a bloodline that fought and drove out invaders that threw out the spirituality of Islam aside and adopted the polluted version of Islam akin to the ones we see plaguing, plaguing cities all over, over the world today. Hari Singh Nalua, outnumbered in unknown terrain, took over parts of Af Afghanistan, sealing and protecting the borders of India from the tyrants that were set on rape and plunder. The 21 Sikhs of Saragari gave their lives down to the last man. The Sikhs fought side by side with the Allied forces in World War I and in World War II in the deserts of Africa and the streets of France. They fought for freedom, never losing hope, but happily fighting to the evil that was trying to change the face of this world. An evil that was responsible for the genocide of six million innocent Jews. The Sikhs fought shoulder to shoulder to see an end to this genocide. When it came to, for India to fight for its own independence, they never shied away. Making less than 2% of the Indian population, they made up 80 plus percent of the freedom movement. Even when the country split Punjab, the land of the Sikhs into two, causing history's bloodiest migration, the Sikhs stood loyal to the nation of India. By definition, Sikhs are a unique people. By definition, Sikhs are a unique people. By tradition, Sikhs are a separate and unique people. By practice and action, Sikhs are a separate people. But more than anything else, by equality of thought, Sikhs are a separate people, which community can boast of the, their guru or their messiah who died for another man's faith. Which community can say that their brothers, just five years old and seven years old, simultaneously refuse to convert to another man's faith yet protected the other man's faith. Which community can say that it includes Muslims and Hindus and those that are deemed under the Hindu caste system 
as untouchables in their guru, in our, as it is in our beloved Guru Granth Sahib. With all these accolades, the setting the Sikhs apart, the Sikhs have always maintained that they're, they're like the Supreme Being, Akal Purukh Waheguru, we are Nirvair, without enmity towards anyone. These traits are useful for a formation, formation of a nation and its rise to power. For the Indian government, it became a nuisance. When the Sikhs, by the way of Akali Dal, challenged the illegally elected government of Indra Gandhi. Her battle with truth and democracy from 1966 until her conviction in 1975, which resulted in her removal from power, should have been a triumph for the Indian people who have been systematically suppressed since independence. But Indira Gandhi responded by refusing to step down, despised orders from the nation's Supreme Court. Instead, she initiated President's rule and draconian laws, censoring press, allowed for detention and arrest of political components, while leaders like the current Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, hid in disguise and escaped into the night. It was the Sikhs who marched through the streets of India, opposing her illegal rule and suspension of democratic rights, not only of the Sikhs, but of all India. The government responded by, however, fabricating situation to initiate clashes against the Sikhs. The goal was, and continues to be, paint the Sikhs as violent separatists, committed to disrupting the peace of the nation. Contrary to the notion the Sikhs' demand was an unprocessed resolution, a resolution that both in spirit and letter mirrored the U.S. federalized system in which state and, poli and, and political and economic power went to, to uh, autonomy to the states. Some, something particularly more important in a nation such as India that is unified more by proximity than anything else. The violent clashes throughout India caused the death and arrest of thousands of Sikhs until 1966, until before the martyrdom of Guru Arjan Dev Ji, the Sikh nation enjoyed a peaceful existence. But Guru Ji's martyrdom forced the awakening of the Sixth Guru, and the Sixth Guru adorned the two, two swords, Miri and Piri, one of worldly power, the other spiritual power. Spirituality is nation, the virtues that are needed for freedom to last, as John Adams states, the only foundation of a, a free constitution is pure virtue. And if this cannot be inspired into our people in a great measure, then we have it now. They, they may change their rulers and the form of government, but they will not obtain a lasting liberty. Guru Hargobind understood this an early, a century earlier. He described how to balance one another and created the concept of spirituality cannot be free until the ruler is just. Without spirituality, all will be oppressed. He raised the first Sikh army and constructed the throne of the eternal, the Akanta. The throne sat 10 feet higher than that of the oppressor of the time. It was a physical reminder to all that came that the Sikhs answered to no, only to one highest power, the, the ultimate power, the truth. It was from this Akal Tag that Sardar Jamnal Singh Pindrawali awoke a nation from its slumber and prepared it for battle. A battle that still rages today between truth and tyranny. The inequities he talked about 33 years are still in place, even further ingrained in, 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 in India. In India, law and order is still for the political convenience of the elite, not for the masses. The basic human rights and freedoms are being crushed every day. Here it be the Muslims in Kashmir speaking out for, for freedom, or the Sikhs in Punjab wanting to feel the glow of freedom, or the rights of Christians who want to simply practice their faith in peace, or the plight of poor Dalits in villages all across India where they live no better than slaves to the rich landlords. If they speak out, they are beaten, tortured, and they will be raped, and men hung from the nearest mango tree. Sadly, even some of our own people have started to accept the lies truth because, as truth it is because to accept captors lies easier than to fight for your own freedom. A Sikh is still not considered a Sikh within India, regardless of his contribution, achievements and everything that sets it apart. Punjab that was once the breadbasket of India has systematically been drained of all of its waters against all international repair. 
Punjab is divided into 138 blocks of which 111 of these blocks are all but dry from its underground water. Punjab is fast becoming an arid state. Sikh youth have been killed off by either faith encounters, by the police, or by the slow death of addiction propagated by the Badal, Badal of the government of Badal, the student of the central government. The leadership of lights in the Badal and Marindar have sold out to the slaves for another day. However, 33 years ago today, Sant Pinar Bali and a small number of his Sikhs refused to follow any path but the path of the group. Like the Sangat gathered here today, under this hot sun, 33 years ago, today that, that same Sangat was gathered at its cool, soothing sarovar in Amritsar to remember the fifth Guru's, his sacrifice and lesson it. The tension in the state was high, but this was no deterrent to the faithful. In the thousands they came to pay respect, prayer on their lips, and innocence in their hearts. Once a crowd has amassed, the army surrounded the city and trapped the worshippers inside. That army descended on those, their own citizens, in the tens of thousands. They came out with automatic, automatic machine guns, mortar, armed vehicles, and tanks. They came with helicopters. Indira Gandhi had first been asked, S.K. Sinha, the Vice Chief of India, who was to succeed as Chief of the Indian Army, to prepare for an attack. And this was done two years prior to 1984. He refused and argued against any attack as being sacrilegious and according to, uh, and, uh, according to Sikh uh, religion and against its, its tradition. He suggested that the government adopt an alternative plan. Instead, Indira Gandhi made the controversial decision to replace him with an obedient officer and obedient assistance and obtain assistance from the British Armed Forces to plan the attack. In the two years that followed, there was, while this plan was being attacked, uh, plan, there was no arrest warrants drafted for or issued for Pindarwali. There was no warrant issued for drafted for any of his forces. There was no indication that he was under sub suspect or subject of any investigation. There was no request for him to vacate the premises of the border. Where India works on a daily basis to arrest and torture those that dare to tell the truth, Sikhs continue to strive for justice by remembering those that gave their lives for it. Those that have been served humanity Sikhi the world over end their prayer each day by laying their head on the ground before their guru, their neck exposed, offering their life to in service where they ask for the understanding and accept, acceptance of Tere Pani, God's will, Sarvata Pala, goodwill to all mankind. These Kesri Nishans are a beacon. They call out to everyone that under this flag resides truth. Under this flag, there is a nation of people ready to travel to far off places to serve the world, feed the hungry, offer safe haven to those who are less fortunate and needy, and stand in solidarity with all those that demand to breathe the freedom and independence, for we six understand this. That independence, it must, that independence itself must be independent of all encumbrances, free from all fear. It is the one thing that ties man to his God. I'll repeat that. Independence itself must be independent of all encumbrances, free from any fear. It is the one thing that ties man to his God. So it is then that under this flag there is freedom, love for humanity, that such and that sees no barrier where all are welcome. Manas ki jade ki pashanbo, we recognize all human races, one brotherhood. In remembrance of our Guru Arjan Dev Ji, and also in memory of those that gave their lives 33 years ago in this movement in forward, I ask that you remember that the Kesri Dastar or the Kesri Chinese on your head that you wear in today is a crown. It is a reminder that you yourself are Khalsa Raj. Each and every one of you is independent. Each and every one of you is compelled to live life only by your Guru's hukam, by your Guru's message of truth and justice. That is free men and women. It is the mindset that those that try to break the movement fear it most. It is the mindset that we must teach our children. It is the mindset that we must maintain in our dealing life, in our lives, in dealing with one another as we contact with one another. When we have prayer or love, we have need. When we have pity. When there is a thirst for justice, we have need. 
then the only thing that will remain is Khal Saraj. Our voice of freedom will not be snuffed. Our call for justice will not be silenced. We will be echoed by, it will, they will be echoed by us. Then our children, then our children's children. For no matter how many bodyguard of lies they put forward, we will speak the truth. No matter how many of us they put down, there will be more of us standing in line. For the fire of justice is lit and it cannot be put down by falsehood. I leave you today with these words from the 10th Master Guru Gobind Singh. Words he wrote to Yahangi's grandson, Emperor Aurangzeb, in the Zafar Nama Devi in snuffing out sparks, what bravery have you shown? In snuffing out sparks, what bravery have you shown? By this big, big fires into conflagration shall be blown. Why good Tika Khalsa? Why good